This is Cody with Frenchies of IG. I'm back again, y'all. basically how I'm building my whelping system for my future given puppies dog. I gotta show you exactly what I'm doing. I'm doing PVC pipe. It is the exact, not the exact setup is love my pups because I don't got the heating system and I didn't get it from him. But I definitely gotta give him credit because it's super innovative. It's super smart and I consider myself to be a super smart person as well. Uh, James, I know you went to school for engineering. Guess what? I did too. And I still ain't thinking that great, super cool idea that you thought of out there, man. I'm sorry that I didn't buy your system. Your system it was 200% than the money I spent on just kind of trying to build my own. But I still will eventually, in the future, I promise you, get the system that you got because heating around the sides is amazing and that'll definitely save the puppies from going under the rail. I mean, definitely save the puppies from being in, I mean, outside of the rails and it's make the puppies venture off to under the rails where they most safe is at. Just like you say, being too cold and mothers crushing the puppies is the two top killers of puppies and uh you know if we can get them under that rail to be safe in the heat that's the plan but i'm gonna go and get the pvc pipe the idea that i got from love my pups james over at love my pups thanks a lot man appreciate it i'm gonna give y'all my exact dimensions and i'm gonna take it from there but if y'all want to get the heating system that he got please purchase it for him matter of fact i'm gonna put his link in the bio so y'all can purchase his heating system because everything I did, I absolutely got from him, size of the cage, everything. I literally went on his website, got the size of the cage, and then I measured out the PVC pipe, and he said he used one and a half inch PVC pipe, and then the corner pieces, and then I went and got the corner pieces in the PVC pipe. I'm gonna grab it out the trunk of my Suburban, and I'm gonna bring it in the house, and I'm gonna cut it all in little squares and pieces right in here. I'm probably gonna have to put the dogs into one kennel so they don't eat no plastic pieces. And the process of doing this, make sure you like your dogs away you do not want the dogs eating those little small crumbs of pvc pipe so i'm gonna show you how i'm building this whelping kit system let's get it so i don't know how clean your home depot is but for some reason the pvc pipe that i went to go pick up was extremely dirty so i do advise just clean it regardless before you get it in the kennel with your dogs you know you don't want to have no super dirty environment for your dog I mean, your mother dog, definitely not the puppies. Our dog is wagging in the background because I had to put them up in order for me to do this process. But just clean it regardless. I don't know how dirty it is in your Home Depot, but man's had a lot of dust and a lot of dirt on the PVC pipe. So I advise you to clean it before you even start to chop it up into the sections that you need it to be on. Just clean it, y'all. So I'm finna clean man's, and I'm gonna try to talk my girlfriend into helping me clean it. Hopefully her behind the camera is willing to help me clean some of these pieces. Because this is several, few several different pieces. I got the corner elbow pieces, which is not nearly as dirty. Oh yeah, and pick up a little saw. Get you a saw, man. Little corner. I got a reciprocator saw, so I think I'm gonna use that for some of the bigger pieces instead of trying to saw all the way through it. But just clean it. A little bit of soapy water shouldn't be bad. I'm gonna clean it out and then I'm gonna start to chop it. Let's get to it. I'm gonna use a soapy rag. Some rags that we have. Baby. Record the cleaning part? Yeah. Just use that white rag right there. You already used it for cleaning. All right. Some of these pieces out the way. This is one piece. Set 
second piece. This is just Don dish soap, so it's not harmful at all to the dogs. They can actually take a bath with this stuff, yo. It's just Don dish soap. That's all. You can literally, you can probably literally air dry this stuff, yo. I'm gonna wipe it down again, but they'll probably fall over by the time I'm finished fully cleaning these, though. I'm sure. This one don't want to stand up. This came up to about thirty dollars. It would have been twenty-five dollars if we didn't do if we didn't have to buy that little Stanley saw. But it was pretty cheap. The saw was only like five dollars though. So on this part, after you get a nice little groove going, you just take you some little wire cutters, a smaller can, I think they might work a little better. Just be con just considering that the front teeth part of it is a little bit more narrow than a larger can. So it's better to get into tight spaces and then you just come right here, you get a nice little piece of it and then you just like that, wiggle it a little bit and then boom, you got you a little piece dug out. See that? And I basically got me a space to put the cage, space to put the gate inside. You're gonna see exactly what I'm doing with this part in a few. Get a little, get this uh, uh, picture a little closer, baby, so they can see it a little better. So you come right in here, and you grab it with this, and then you just give a nice little snap to it, wiggle it, boom. Now you got a big old gouge in there. You see that now? That little piece came out of there. And then you want to do the same with this side, basically. Always make sure that you line these up as close to each other as you can before you get the trying to take pieces out of it. And then you take it from there. You want to make sure your pieces that you're digging is, you know, wide enough to where it can fit between the gate. Before it can, where it can fit between these pieces right here. And an easy way to test it is just kind of take it off of this piece, you know? Just test it and just, you know, bring it over here and see. Like this, this end is, is, is deep enough, but this end right here isn't. As you can see, I need more cutting on that end. Then you can test this way. This end right here isn't deep enough, and this end right here isn't deep enough either. So here, I'll be back when I'm finished, y'all. Okay, y'all, so you basically start the line with this. Try to get it as accurate as you can. You could mark it with some markers. I got Sharpies, but I didn't use them because I was pretty much thinking that whatever inaccuracies that I'll do with that uh, saw, hand saw, that I'm gonna kind of correct with this. And then you just get the grooves basically wide enough in order to go in this metal part right here cannot stress that enough get it wide enough to go in here and then you know you're on the right path of having it figured out you don't want to make them too wide but you want to make them wide enough to where they can fit in there and they won't fall down or fall off and then you just want to take it from there i'm gonna be back when it's finished and i'm gonna show y'all what i got after i clean this mess up and i'm gonna talk to y'all about different steps or whatever kind of problems i ran into on my behalf, and I'm gonna tell y'all some of the measurements, I'm gonna measure them, and then I'm gonna tell them to y'all once I get one side, I'm gonna measure the other side, and then we're gonna take it from there. I'm gonna check back in when I'm getting closer to be done, so y'all ain't just watching me do a whole bunch of cutting and chiseling that PVC pipe. I'm gonna be back, all right? Now, when it come to trying to get these grooves in here, y'all, you just wanna do it real light. Like, just lay it over top of here, and then just go across like this. You don't wanna do it too tough. It's not gonna be hard in order for these very sharp, very small teeth to get inside of the PVC pipe. It's easier to cut than you may think. So just lay it over top of here and then just rub it back and forth until you get some grooves. And then you wanna take 
this saw down into the PVC pipe until you see the blade just really at the end of the tip. I cut my finger very lightly, don't worry about me, I'm super tough, don't worry about it, but I just want to make sure that you avoid cutting yourself real badly from taking advice from some guy on the internet that didn't teach you about safety first. So my advice would be to wear some gloves that would be resistant against any kind of saws and blades like you would if you was at work working with sharp items, but if you don't got none of them in your home, ban them will be worth it but if you don't want to bound because you're on a small budget then just make sure that you lay the saw over the pvc plastic and kind of let it rad over it itself like this and then when you get a little bit of grooves you put a little bit of pressure down but start out very lightly now i got one end as you can see in here i'm gonna have to clean it out y'all come get a close-up baby please i got one end as you can see in there then I got the other end, as you can see in there, down there. You can see that as well. And now, I basically, all I have to do left is just measure the horizontal pieces that's going across. That's all I gotta do is measure those, and then I'm gonna have it all put together, and then I'm gonna give y'all some measurements, and I'm gonna give y'all a link to uh, Love My Pups uh, website. I think it's called My Breeder Supply or something like lovemypups.com or My Breeder Supply. It's one of those other websites. I think he owns both websites. I'm gonna give y'all the information of where, of exactly, you know, the dimensions and stuff from his website and what size cage to get. I'm gonna link y'all, I'm gonna give y'all his link and then I'm gonna put y'all the sizes and stuff for which kind of PVC I'm using will be my sizes the sizes that I got from him, but the size of the cage will be on his website. All right, y'all, I'm gonna see y'all when I'm closing out this video. All right. Okay, y'all, so I'm back. I'm gonna show y'all how the setup turned out. We got uh, her eating inside of her welcome box. And another thing about exactly what I'm doing is you wanna set the welcome box up before the puppies come because you wanna kinda get the dog pretty much comfortable with the area and wherever she'll be at with her puppies before she actually had her puppies. You don't wanna change up too much of the environment, especially her diet. You wanna keep her diet normal. You wanna keep her environment normal. You wanna keep her water normal. You wanna keep things as normal as possible so she can be as comfortable as possible and be the best mom as possible. So let me show y'all how it is. She's about seven. She's about five to six weeks out from having her puppies. I'm gonna show y'all what it looked like. Well, this is exactly what it looked like. This is one corner. I'll put some arrows on it so when I take it down, I'll be able to see it if I ever want to put it up again. And this is the other corner where I take it down so I could be able to put it up if I want to use it again, which I more than most likely will be using it again. And she looked like she pretty comfortable in here, if you see her. She looked like she pretty comfortable in here. Oh, girl, you love your setup, baby. Just the I love you hug, in case y'all don't know. And this is what it looked like so far. I'm going to put some more padding down. Uh, I'm going to put some um, waterproof padding in order for, like, the puppies to be able to use it. You know, the first week or two, mama clean them up, but then after that, we'll have to take it from there. So it'll be in a space where it's not close to the front door or the back door. We're pretty much gonna take this upstairs so it can be way less of a wind drift. That's something else you wanna do for the whelpin area for your dogs, no air drift. These corners was pretty much the hardest part of it, but once you get past that, it's pretty much go time from there. So this is Cody from Frenchies at IG again with my second part of the video or the first part that I told y'all about. And if you got any specific questions about this or the dimensions or any kind of questions you got at all, let's do healthy breeding, let's do, you know, informative breeding, reach out to me at Frenchies of IG, which is F-R-E-N-C-H-I-E-S-O-F dot IG, Frenchies of dot IG on Instagram. If you got any questions or you want to inquire about puppies, this litter will be coming up in June, the second week of June. I don't know exactly when I'm going to be releasing videos of, I mean, I don't know exactly when I am going to be releasing these videos, but hopefully it's before her litter so you can inquire about uh, puppies. This is June. It'll be in June, first or second week of June, 2021. The video should be out before then. Let's do healthy breeding. Let's do informative breeding. And I'm out.